The Magic School Bus Sees Stars, written by Joanna Cole and illustrated by Bruce Deacon. If you ever get Miss Frizzle for a teacher, take this warning from me. Get ready for something wild and crazy to happen anytime you hear these three little words to the bus. For example, take the time Dorothy Ann was sick and had to stay home on her birthday. Tim was working on the birthday present we were going to give her, a model of the sun that played You Are My Sunshine when you wound it up. Just when Tim was putting the final touches on DA's present, the phone rang. It was DA. She wanted us to come over to see her new telescope. We said we'd be over as soon as Miss Frizzle came back from her teacher's meeting. Then. Enter the frizz. Take a look, Miss Frizzle, said Tim, who couldn't wait to show off our musical model of the sun. But then something terrible happened. The model fell and smashed on the floor. It's too late to make another present, said Phoebe. What are we going to do? As if answering Phoebe's question, the TV clicked on. It was on one of those channels where you can buy things, and this weird guy named Horace Cope was saying you could buy an actual star for just seven dollars. He said only three stars were left. We were all taking out our dollar bills when Keisha shouted, Wait a minute, I'm not spending my money on anything I haven't checked out myself. Keisha's right, the frizz agreed. We don't have to buy a star sight unseen. And then she said those three words. We all got onto the magic school bus. Or should I say the magic space bus? When we looked down, we couldn't believe our eyes. We could see the whole earth. It looked huge at first, but then it looked smaller and smaller as we got farther away. The same with the moon. Then we couldn't see the earth or the moon at all. And the sun was so far away, it looked like... Well, it looked like just a tiny little star. Then, Miss Frizzle told us something amazing. Our sun really is a star. It looks bigger than the other stars because it's so much closer to Earth. Soon, we were cruising through space. The view was fantastic. Gee, look at all those teeny weeny stars, said Phoebe. I wonder if they'll get bigger when we get close, like the Earth and the moon did. They'd better, said Keisha. We need some way to tell them apart. We turned on the space bus TV, and guess who was on? That good old stellar seller, Horace Cope. Now, you're probably asking how you can pick out a star because they all look alike, right? said Horace. Wrong. There are lots of different kinds of stars. For instance, he continued, take this little baby, only two million years old. Believe it or not, that's really young for a star. To see it yourself, said Horace, you'd have to fly at a speed of 500 million miles an hour, and it would still take you about 80 years to get there. Miss Frizzle hit the controls, and we zoomed out into space. Maybe it would take Horace Cope 80 years to reach the baby star, but then he doesn't have the frizz for a teacher, and he doesn't have a magic space bus. As we approached a beautiful swirling cloud, Miss Frizzle said, Hmm, that baby star should be around here somewhere, but it's hard to tell with all this dust and gas. Dust and gas, said Keisha. Is that what these weird clouds are made of? Phoebe looked worried. This is not a good place for a baby, she said. But Miss Frizzle told us, On the contrary, kids, it's the best place for a baby. Hey, shouted Wanda, there's the baby star. For a baby, it sure is humongous, said Arnold. It's actually on the small side, Miss Frizzle told us, only about half the size of our son. Tim was ready to buy. Let's call up Horace Cope and get it for DA. But Keisha still wasn't sure. Phoebe agreed with Keisha. Poor thing, she said. It looks like it's got gas. Very good, Phoebe. All stars have gas, explained Miss Frizzle. That's what they're made of. But this baby just hasn't settled down yet. It's still kind of wild. Now, Keisha was sure. 
No way, she said. I'm not spending a dime on this star. It's too young and it's too wild. I want something bigger and brighter, with no dust around it. A star we can trust, like our own sun. Back on the old TV, Horace Cope seemed to hear every word we were saying. No problem, he said. Remember, there are still two stars left, and one of them is a five billion year old Middle Ager, right in the prime of its life. Planets at no extra charge. The Middle Age star sounded perfect, but the Space Bus computer told us it was 100 million million miles away. No problem for the frizz. Seats, everyone, and buckle up, she said. Then she got that look in her eye as she launched us into hyperdrive. When the space bus slowed down, we could see our star. There it is, Keisha, said Tim, just the kind of star we want. Keisha still wasn't convinced. It looks okay, she said, but I want to be sure it's different from the baby star. Of course, the Frizz thought that was a great idea. To get a closer look at our star, we got into the special star shuttle. Lucky for us, the shuttle came equipped with sunglasses, or should I say star glasses. We all waited to hear what Keisha would say. Finally, she spoke. I like the color a lot better, she said, and it seems a lot calmer. No dust clouds around it either. And I can see at least two planets. Wow, this star looks just like our sun. Everyone was really excited, until we got back to the space bus and heard Horace's voice on the TV. But I haven't even called in yet, said Keisha. I guess someone bought it first, said Arnold. We all felt pretty bad until Carlos reminded us, there's still one star left. All eyes and ears were glued to the TV. This was our last chance to get D.A., a star for her birthday. That's right, folks, Horace was saying. Just one star left, and I've saved the best for last. A genuine red supergiant, 20 million years old and 100 times bigger than the sun. What's more, I'll take 50 cents off the price if somebody buys it in the next minute. Check it out. As you can guess, with the frizz at the controls, we reached the red supergiant in a wink, just like magic. Keisha looked out the window. Well, it's certainly the biggest star we've seen, and I like the color, she said. It doesn't have any planets, but there are no dust clouds either, and it's no wild baby. Tim called in and ordered the red supergiant. We did it, he said. We got DA a star that's bigger and brighter than all the others. Ralphie looked worried. Hey, wait a minute, he said. If it's so much bigger, how come we got it so cheap? Yeah, said Wanda. Horace Cope did seem in a hurry to sell the red supergiant. Do you think there's something wrong with it? Asked Keisha. I don't see anything wrong. As my old friend Lee Brarian always said, said Miss Frizzle, you can't tell a book by its cover. Let's take a peek inside with the sneak a peek -a -tron. On the sneak a peek -a -tron screen, we could actually see right inside our star. This is what we saw. Who cares what's going on inside, said Tim, as long as it looks okay on the outside. But just then, boom, the star exploded. After all our hard work, DA's big beautiful star exploded into smithereens. Why did our star explode? asked Keisha. It looked okay on the outside. It was bigger and brighter? Well, interrupted Phoebe, it was 20 million years old. A stellar observation, Phoebe, said Miss Frizzle. Stars do grow old and go out. Some go out with a bang. They're called supernovas. Super mess, said Carlos. All that's left of DA star is a big cloud of dust and gas. Hey, wait, said Keisha. This looks a lot like the place where we found the baby star. I bet another baby star is about to be born right here. That's right, said Phoebe. Stars are made of hot gases squeezed together in a ball. Then we figured out the whole idea. Gases are squeezed hot enough to make a new baby star shine. 
and the hot gas keeps the star shining like fuel for a fire for millions and millions of years. When the fuel finally runs out, the star dies out. If it goes out with a bang, it leaves behind the stuff to make new stars again. Very interesting, but we still need a present for DA, Wanda reminded us. It's too bad we can't gather up all this gas and dust and squeeze it together to make DA a new star. Who says we can't, Wanda? said Miss Frizzle. Normally, it would take about a million years to make a star, but since we have a magic bus, we can make it happen now. Thanks to the magic space bus, presto! A brand new star named Dorothy Ann was shining in the sky. Mission accomplished. When we arrived at Dorothy Ann's house, DA was looking through a new telescope she got for her birthday. You're just in time to see a brand new star in the sky, she said. Actually, DA, said Keisha, that's your birthday present. We named it Dorothy Ann in your honor. But how? I don't understand. For once, DA was confused. That's a long story, said Miss Frizzle. A story filled with dust and gas, with heat and... Happy birthday, DA! We all shouted together.